So I am very pleased to welcome a man who really needs no introduction, and I'm not just being lazy. There are monuments to his work built on uh, our website and in our community. Uh, the creator of Getting Things Done, David Allen. Hello, sir. Hi, Brett. Delighted to be here. Thanks. Uh, I have to thank you, first of all, for your willingness to come on a show called uh, School Sucks. When I named it that six plus years ago, I didn't know that one day we would be re recruiting such respectable guests, you know, from the from the business world. I'm happy to have you, and uh, I appreciate your willingness to take a chance with us here. Sure. Hey, I dropped out of graduate school, so, you know, apropos. Maybe. Ooh, <laughs> so did I. That's interesting. Since I brought up one of the central themes in our show, let's actually uh, let's actually start there. Um, you do a lot of consulting, or you have in the past, you have for a long time, with a lot of high power, uh, seemingly very successful uh, CEOs. Are you still, you know, at this point in your career, surprised by, I guess, the absence of certain skills? Like, people who appear very, very successful, you would think that these types of organizational skills would be really integral in a you know, uh, an education that prepares people for success in the real world. But did you, I guess you could even start when you began consulting, were you really like shocked that people who were so successful could be, you know, so disorganized in their professional lives in some ways? Well, I think it needs a little bit of a reframe. Uh, sure. Brett. Let me, let me, let me, let me add a vector in here. The people most attracted to my work are the people who need it the least. Mm. It's already the most positive, productive, organized, uh, proactive, aspirational people that are attracted to what I do. Because what I did was discover something that gets rid of drag on people's systems, gets rid of the barnacles on the ship. Right? And who's most interested in getting rid of drag? Fastest people. Mm. So interestingly enough, you know, the, the work that I do really is about unlocking a next level of space and creativity and game for people who are already in the game. Yeah. So yeah, over the years, it was a little surprising to me. I thought I was the last guy in the world to learn what I'd learned and that the higher up I got, I was dealing with people who would make more money in a year than I'd see in my life. And you know, the big surprise was I thought they would have this nailed, but the higher up I went, the more hungry they were for it. So yeah, they've got, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd have to have some basic you know, blocking and tackling to be able to get to those levels of game anyway. But it's that next extra little piece, that next, you know, I'm, I'm about to coach a guy right now, his presenting issue. I mean, this guy, if you saw his CV, you go, wow, you know, he at, at age 46, this guy is on top of his world. He is like, he's doing six gazillion things, highly successful. And his, his presenting issue was, David, I'm up to here. I am, I am just hitting my stride and I got no more room. And that's what that's what I'm sort of supplying to him. So this is a pretty elegant and pretty sophisticated approach that I actually uncovered for myself first, and then I turned around and it worked with with other people. So in, anybody who's totally out of control and disorganized is not even probably doesn't even think they need what I do. <laughs> they, mm. they, you know, they're not even at that level of game yet. Yeah, I'm kind of like the I'm kind of like the crotchety old golf pro. You know, <laughs> kind of way past his prime, and I, I, I'm running a little, you know, driving range in in Podunk somewhere. And, <laughs> and, and some high powered high powered player has their, their their plane has to land, but they want to get keep their swing, and so they they're out there on this on this funky little driving range that I'm running, and I walk up and I go, you know, I see a hitch in your swing. I'm not the golf pro, right? But I can see the hitch in their swing, and that's I think a better way to see what I what I uncovered. And who's most interested in it? Yeah, I so I think that you're absolutely right that there's Does that a, make sense. Yeah, sure. There's a, a level of self awareness that uh, I think people have to have to really embrace this, and I think they also have to have a clear definition uh, of the work that they're trying trying to do. And well, I, that's that that said, Brett, we're now teaching this to seven, eight, and nine year olds. Uh, that's terrific. So, I'm really excited to hear that. It's a basic methodology, but that we're not born doing, and it doesn't happen automatically. You actually have to put some cognitive horsepower to make this game work with the best practices I came up with. Not a lot, but it's not free. So you have to have enough interest or just be uh, coached from day one. <laughs> Here's mm -hmm. how you get things done. You define what done means and what doing looks like. And you know, just that simple little algorithm itself is one most people aren't doing. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can learn that. 
but again, it doesn't happen automatically. You weren't born and hopped out of your mom and go, hey, mom, what exactly are we trying to accomplish and what's the next step? Is that yours or mine? Mm, <laughs> it's but don't learned you, behavior. Yeah, don't you think there's a really basic process that is, that is innate, a kind of input process output that, that the mind wants to go through, like, you know, um, identification, integration and action would be one way that I would mm-hmm. describe it. And I think that what, what was really so valuable for me about getting things done was having that process that I, I feel like is the, the impulse of the mind defined, to, to have it made explicit and then applied uh, to my work, I think was, was the really helpful thing. And, um, you know, that being said, this would be review for a lot of my audience because we did a whole series on productivity in 2013. We did a review of it in January of this year. But there are definitely people who are listening or watching who are new to your work. I'm sure at this point you've developed a kind of uh, GTD uh, elevator speech. So and, and I also know you have a new version of the book where you change some of the language uh, related to your five steps. So could you just run that uh, run through that really quickly for the people who might be unfamiliar? Sure. And by the way, I didn't make this up. What I did to your point was I, I uncovered what we all do when you get your kitchen under control or your company under control or your desk under control is a five step process. Hmm. And that's really some sort of some of the core methodology here. First of all, you need to capture or identify the things that are not on cruise control, that are not running on automatic. What's got your attention about your kitchen or, or this project or your life? So you capture first. Then you clarify exactly what that stuff means. Are you committed to move on this? And if so, what outcome are you after and what's the action step you need to take to move it forward? That's the clarify step. Right. Step three is once you've made those decisions, how do you organize those reminders appropriately? If you can't finish it in the moment, you're going to need to capture it somewhere in some trusted place, and your head's the worst place to, that you could put it. So, you know, a lot of this is about building the external brain so that you have a, a, a trusted systematic process to keep hold of these, these commitments that you have, the work at hand, if you will, a- outcomes and actions that you need to take and are committed to do. That step three is organized. Step four then is to step back and reflect and review on that whole gestalt, you know, at all those different levels of commitments and horizons that we have commitments. Yeah. And then step five is to then to engage your attention or your consciousness or your focus or your resources based upon the first four steps. Now that I've captured, clarified, organized, and looked at everything, now I'm going to have a beer. I'm going to have a nap or I'm going to, I need to work on my uh, business plan for the bank or whatever you decide to do at any point in time. But don't, going through those steps, if those are done appropriately, then you're, you're coming from a place of trust, not hope. And that's really the game. The end game is really, actually, frankly, the big secret here is that getting things done is not so much about getting things done. It's really about getting appropriately engaged with all the aspects of your life so you're totally present with what you're doing because that's the most productive state to be coming from. 